we are becoming more devotional by learning how to make an offering. Like one of the first things you learn in Krishna consciousness is to offer your food. Yes, because you eat eaten every day. So when you learn how to offer your food, then your life automatically becomes devotional. Because every food morsel becomes Krishna connected. Otherwise food is just gluttony. Just eating for the pleasure of the tongue or the belly. But there's no spirituality involved. So we need we need the spiritual connection. We need the spiritual connection. Always. That's offering. That's prayer. Parikrama is prayer. Parikrama means pray to this altar, pray to this altar. Here Krishna killed Kaliya, uh, sorry, uh, defeated Kaliya. Pray here, pray there. That's the whole meaning of Parikrama. That we pray to the water, pray to the building where the great Acharyas established Seva. Can you imagine what is meant to construct the Radha Govinda Mantir? Hey! Go back 300 years ago, there's no rocks here. They have to bring each single rock with bullock carts from 160 kilometers from here. Unbelievable! Why? Was Rupa Goswami a madman who wanted to make the biggest show, the biggest architectural show of the history in India? This building is the most outstanding building in North India. <coughs> As foolish as they are, they build so many buildings around it that you can hardly see it. Because they didn't know how to appreciate what architectural landmark this is. Can you imagine in North India, the most spectacular piece of architecture, just a stone throw away from here. But how much energy went in there, you cannot imagine. And there was no slave work involved. Forget it. When the Indians built a temple, <sighs> ah, they do it with so much patience and so much love. I will take you these days one to Premandir. And Premandir was constructed by more than 1,000 carvers. 1,000 top quality car to really take a rock, take a hammer, and take a metal pin. And you say, now carve a head. I tell you, most of you would look right there. <laughs> say, no, sorry, Guru Dev, I cannot do that. Not for me, impossible. Well, of course, you haven't learned it, you know. But very rarely you find somebody who can do that. Rock, solid, strong rock. You go, maybe with a machine. <laughs> huh? They had no machines. Well, that time. Now they use some machine. They're very, very good. But have you ever seen 900 people clicking on rock at the same time like this? Tick, 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 sitting on the rock or next to the rock and all making one big design coordinated and all of them smiling when you come and look at their work now how much do you think they got paid for doing that 
Let's, let make, let's make it an estimation. These top class carvers were receiving 300 rupees a day for doing this carving job. I mean, it's very, very little money. At five dollars, something like that. And they were carving for years. Because there was so much carving, so much carving. When I take you to this temple, your eyes will become like this. Oh, 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 oh. My God. They constructed a world wonder here in Vrindavan. Absolutely unbelievable. <coughs> So, my dear friends, <laughs> this is going on in Vedam. Working hard with a smile for years, doing the most monumental piece of art. We cannot compete with that, you know. Even though, even in the West, there are some carvers. They can carve marble fantastic. Actually, I have one disciple called Baladev, Balaram. He is living in Portugal. He has a carving school. <coughs> Sidanti Maharaj knows him. He can carve marble and do things. Not that this is impossible and only Indians can do it. But the mentality, the dedication, the monumentous cooperation amongst themselves to make this. Therefore, I am continuously inspired to come here and to admire our brothers and sisters in India, how they do so many wonderful things for Krishna. And when I think about Rupa Goswami and the construction of the Radha Govinda Ji Mandir, I almost faint. Not possible, not possible, not possible. How they could do this huge job so many years back without any modern facility. They could have said 100,000 times, let's make a small place. <laughs> no. They wanted to give the testimony of Radha, Govindaji and Mahaprabhu to the world. This is the Lord of Lords. So they made the building of the building for the Lord of Lords. What to say? What to think? I sent you one morning to Govindaji, but Siddhanti Marsh told me that very few people went. So, we have to go there. Vinda, Govindaji temple is also the secret place of Govindaji, where Govindaji was hidden for thousands of years in a mountain. And there is the place where Vinda Devi was worshipped also. I can only say, my Lord and Master, his divine grace, Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, he brought us into the world of wonders. Wonders and miracles of kings and queens who came here to worship Krishna. And now the kings and queens of South America are coming here to worship Krishna as well. I mean, I say kings and queens because you are, you are, you are very special people who come here from so long to try to find out what is Krishna. Who is Krishna? And I don't say that to be Chupamedia. I say that because Narayani, she worked for 15 years to come here for Krishna. 
and Raval and Krishna Singh and all of you made so much work and so much effort for serving Krishna. Actually, there's one topic which I discussed this morning with Swami Maharaj. He gave me that early morning shower. Reflect upon reality. What is our reality? And just because I meditated on it, I have to talk about it. I have to get it out. You know? I've talked about it many times, but many times different opinions appear. What about having a position in this society? What about having a job? What about having a position in this society? Which more or less means, if you want to get it, you have to take uh, studies and exams and surrender to yourself to the system because they have established a very strong system. And only when you surrender to that system do you get any job. Or do you get any position. Government position or things like that. <coughs> what is a devotee's aspiration? Does a devotee want to have a position in society? Do you want to be, have a job in a company or in the government? Do you really want that? Do we want that? Now, first of all and for sure, we are flexible people. We are not extremists in that sense. In other words, if somebody comes to me today and says, I'm a doctor, I'm working in the Ministry of Health in Ecuador, then I say, wow, congratulations, you're a doctor, you're, you have a job in the ministry, and you're a devotee, my God, my respect to you, because you're offering your studies and your knowledge now to Krishna's pleasure. <coughs> so I will give full recognition to that. But if that person tells me, yes, but I'm unhappy the job, because in the Ministry of Education or of Health, now I'm supposed to oversee <coughs> the abortion clinics of, of Quito and I'm frightened with it, I don't want to have anything to do with that. Well, then I would say, no problem, just give it up and we do something else. In other words, we are flexible. We are flexible but we have our standards. But what is the devotee's position? Sometimes devotees are worried. What about my future? How am I going to make my money? How am I going to sustain a family? How I do this? How I do that? Like my <coughs> daughter Ladini. She is uh, she's overlooking the preaching in Belo Horizonte, Brazil. And she studied chemistry. And she is financing the temple there in Belo Horizonte, or the future uh, Vishnu Priyasha, I didn't tell her, give up your job. So, we are flexible for different circumstances. You have to understand that. We are definitely flexible. But, if you ask me for a devotee, what I say, well, my options for you, number one is food. Go in the food industry if you want to be an independent 
thinking Vaishnava. <coughs> Become a cook or open a restaurant. Get some money, then you can preach there, you give some Krishna Kata, like we have so many videos, they can run all day preaching there to the people and you can give certain guidance, you can organize tours to the farms, how many things you can do from a little restaurant or a bigger restaurant, who knows? Or somebody says, I don't like food industry, I don't want to be involved with it. I say, well, maybe, maybe you want to send open an inbound yoga center. Oh, I also don't like yoga. I don't want this. Okay. Then, why don't you start an eco-yoga farm and preach from that position and make your income maybe by Temascal or by something like this, or massage, or some thera therapy type of thing you can offer. But at the same time, of course, I must, <coughs> I must also clearly admit to you that I'm favoring always Krishna and Prabhupada. So in, in Colombia, we say, no da puntada sin terar. So when I give an advice to somebody what to do, I always keep in mind that that may be used for Krishna as well. Of course, if somebody says, I'm going to have a job in the government and I'm going to give $500 to the temple every month, you know what I would say or what do? I would say, oh, you're so wonderful. You actually want to give $500 donation to the temple every month? I swoon. I, I meditate. Oh, you are so incredible. Huh? Even though Ishana, when he was fired up, he collected $300 a day in Chile when he was a young fired up Brahmachari. Hmm? I couldn't believe it making $300 in, in, in Chile in a day. We can build one temple, we can open a new restaurant every month. Look, 300 by 30. $9,000 which you can <coughs> $9,000 which he collected in one month if he wanted or Krishna wants I have opened many restaurants in my life most of them I opened with $1,000 or $2,000 capital <coughs> got it? If he collects $9,000 and gives that to me, I can open at least four restaurants with that. In one month, by the mercy of Krishna. Oh, you want to instead be in a job and be some... It's a question of surrender. It's a question of realistic approach and putting your energy where it belongs. Not to be a lazy bum. Devotees can do it, but it's not done automatically. It's uh, one shoe was stolen just recently by a monkey. <laughs> so I'm reflecting, okay, inbound yoga, inbound tours, or maybe you become an OIDA therapist. Of course, then you do have to study. Or what do you have to study? You have to study logotherapy, oida therapy, and above all you have to study what your guru wants to do with all these things. Then what other option is there? Well, you can be a book distributor, Yuganama. He is doing Sankirtan with many devotees for the last one year or two years. Dos años. And they are collecting a lot of money. Not 
huge amounts just selling books. Hard work. Hard work. But let me ask you a question. Is there any job really which is not hard work? Hmm? I don't know. For example, you may work in the hospitals. Yesterday we visited Vidal Chaitanya, we visited the devotees. We met three people dying. And some people, they work there. They work there all the time, helping those who are about to die. Is that a heavy job? I remember one devotee from Costa Rica, an architect. He came here to work in Bhaktivinanda Hospital. Very nice devotee, good friend of Paramahansa. Yes? You want to work somewhere where people die every day? Good. Fantastic. But don't tell me it's not, it's not a hard work. Just being always in the face of death, in the face of death, in the face of death. Every work is hard work. That's my point. So I, I said this. Then Mother Vrinda, she started picking up garbage without a garbage bag. I don't know. She just wanted to make me happy or something. And then I saw she was trying to catch a piece of garbage, which was looked very ugly, but it was on the other side of this barbed wire. <coughs> and it was very difficult to reach. I said, leave it, leave it. No, she got a stick. And she worked a few times, finally she got it out. I said, that's why you are the director of the bank. That's why you are getting such a big job, because people see when you want to do something, you get it done. I mean, any average brahmachari, he would have seen that bag there which says, <laughs> <laughs> huh? Sorry to say, brahmachari, but, uh, and you won't be bank directors either. Nor will you have a big restaurant working for you, unless you start working hard. This is not a place for lazy people. If you want to get something accomplished. If you want to be a good temple president, then you get up in the morning and you make sure everybody has a service and everybody's happy and everybody is engaged. Then you get something done. You know, people go to school, Usually they think, oh, I don't have to worry about anything now. I'm just going to school and then in the future I won't worry what to do with this. So in a way, this system is not very helpful because it makes people kind of lazy. Of course, not everybody. There's also people in university that work hard and study like anything and they... Uh, acquire lots of things <clears throat> but it's a fact you know we have to be willing to take responsibility just like marriage marriage is a big responsibility because you're going to have babies who need you and you have to work for them all day every day of your life that's many why many of you are not married because you don't want to be bothered with this. For, because of laziness you don't want to get married. And if you are not married because of laziness, then it's not very spiritual. It's not, oh, because I'm so spiritual, that's why I didn't marry. No, if you didn't marry because you were so attached to taking care of your temple, helping the guru do this and that, and therefore you actually said, no, I, I, will, not, I will not accept this Krihasta charge because that will take away so much of my time from the preaching. Well, then it's a different story. I always say, for the last... 20 years, I repeat that same mantra. If you want to be a real brahmachari, a real sannyasi, then work as hard as if you have 10 children to maintain at least. 
Then I believe that you have something to do with brahmachari and with something to do. And work according to the guidelines of the guru. Don't work according to your own ideas. If you have good ideas, then present them to the guru. But don't cut out the guru's plan just because you think you don't want to do it. Because then you're not getting any success in your private life and you're not getting any success in the spiritual life. Example, we decided to make the Arctic every day in Brahmakunda. It's an old plan. Okay, maybe sometimes we just don't have anybody to go there. But now we have so many people, plenty of people, but we have to decide who's going to do the Arctic there. In all the months of Kartik, we should have a nice Arctic there. It's right around the corner. And I took the responsibility. The fact that we don't have Arctic there means that the people of the Raj Foundation, they are thinking, ah, Paramatvedi Swami is not very reliable. He's, he just a big talker. He speaks about Arctic there, but then nobody comes and there's nobody doing this. You know? That's the image I inherit from this superficial not keeping standards. Now what does it mean in Arctic, my dear? Some people may say, well, it's not so important to make an Arctic. Well, then why is it important to worship our deity here? Is Brahmakunda not the holiest of all places and we are the most privileged? that we can make the Arctic. We, Western devotees, receive the charge to make the Arctic in Brahmakunda. What an honor! Yes, it's work. It also takes some energy. Actually, I bought everything for it. But you see, I can also not keep everything running myself alone. Now, I'm not really blaming anybody. I just blame everybody. <laughs> ah, sorry, sorry. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, I'm saying we have to be more responsible if we want to cut a good profile. If we want to give a good impression in Vendam, like now I'm invited in two hours to a meeting. The senior citizens are meeting, they want to make a gateway in the entrance of Vendam called the Goranga Gate. Because they feel that people should come into Vendavan, they should see. We already have a we already have a Nimbarka gate, Nimbarka Charya, we have a Bhaktivedanta Swami gate, but there's no Guranga gate, so some people say. And they invite me. I consider it an honor when the senior citizens of Vendavan invite you. Of course, they may invite me because they hope that I give a donation to the gate, right? It may not just that they invite me because they like me, but, but sometimes even to be invited for a donation is an honor. Because if you're not considered, it's something like this, like the, the, like the platform of, of working on interreligious affairs. If you do not go to interreligious events, do you know what that means? It, it, it sends out a very simple message. It sends out the message, I just don't care for all of you. I don't care for all your ideas. You're just a bunch of karmis. And therefore, why should I sit with you? So you don't say such a gross, offending thing. But by not going, by not participating, you're sending out that message. So if there's an interreligious forum and the devotees are not participating, that is a degree of arrogance which has nothing to do with the Trinata Peace or Nichina principle. It's the opposite. It's the arrogance principle. So that's why for years I've always participated with interreligious conversations and, and platforms. That's why I went to Korea when they invited me. Because when I went to Korea, 
I requested them, I will go if they give me a chance to present the OIDA therapy. And that's what they did. They promised me you can present the OIDA therapy and everything this and everything that. I mean, they paid my ticket there, my hotel. They spent, they spent something like $4,000 to have me there, at least. But they didn't let me speak on the OIDA therapy. So, so in a way, I wasted my time. But you never waste your time. You meet many people. As a matter of fact, on the way back from Korea, I met a Christian an Angelican bishop from Venezuela. And he had been a vegetarian. And he liked very much the devotees. And when we came to Miami, he came and stayed at our temple overnight. And he invited me to Maracaibo to do something together. So, you never know what Krishna is doing here and there. You never know. A wonderful man. And in, in Korea, I met so many other interesting people, but, you know, that's life. It wasn't, it wasn't what I was promised. Because I think that the OIDA therapy is the actual key to interreligious understanding. And I will explain to you why. This is not a fantasy of mine. Interreligious people, they accept <coughs> that they have to respect each other despite their different opinions of worship. You see, religion means a certain type of faith, how to approach your relationship to God. So one person does it, he walks around Governor. Another person does it, he walks around the Kaaba in Mecca. Another person, he walks around Jerusalem to see the holy places of Christianity or Judaism there. All the four are walking. They're just walking to different places. And in the Sierra Nevada, the natives, they're also walking. They're also walking a lot. They're walking to the holy mountain of justice. They're walking to the holy, to the holy place of confession. They're walking to the holy place of of the water, of the lakes, of the snow. Hmm? So every religious person in the world is walking. We are walking right now, Braj Mandal Parikrama. Hmm? A lot of walking. But the one saying, my walking is spiritual, your walking is worthless. <laughs> you see? Funny, no? Sounds funny, but Sometimes religious people are very fanatic, so fanatic. So by the OIDA therapy, you understand that the soul needs to walk towards God because God has given these legs to him and God creates a holy item or hito or landmark or whatever or deity so that you can walk to and offer your obeisance and make your offering, or like your pagamento, like they say in, in the natives. So, by the OIDA therapy, you study the original psychology of religious attitude. That's beautiful. Now, when you do that, then you offer a sudden start understanding that Faith is a God-given gift, and everybody needs it to live. And there's no reason and no justification for discrimination of, I mean, uh, of one system to another system. The only question we can ask as far as religion is concerned, are they doing something to make everybody happy? If yes, fantastic. And are they doing something which makes others unhappy? If the answer is yes, then that's not real religion. 
So the oida therapy system technology is actually helping in the interreligious communication forum to clear out all the doubts about what is really religion and what's not religion. So that's what I wanted to present in Korea. And I'm keeping presenting it here and there and everywhere I get the chance. I will also present this in the World Hindu Parliament if they give me a chance. Maybe yes, maybe no. Because you're not supposed to be attached. I don't feel very important myself, but I feel that Oida therapy approach can surely make, make this breach of overcoming this I'm better than you on the principle of my face. No, all face are glorious who make people good people. And Srila Prabhupada, my guru, he said that. He said, I don't come to convert everybody to be Krishna devotees. I'm just telling everybody should love God. Let's love God. Let's glorify God. Let's thanks to God. <clears throat> in any way, in any form which is good and favorable to humanity, that broad-mindedness doesn't make me less a Goranga Bhakta because Goranga is that broad-minded. And if Goranga would not be that broad-minded, I wouldn't want to be his devotee either. I don't want to be anybody's devotee who's going to tell me, hate the others. Sorry. And I never learned that from Prabhupada to hate others. But I have to admit, I have to admit that many of my fellow God brothers and God sisters, they kept hating others despite coming in contact with Prabhupada. I'm not happy about that. I'm not proud about that, but it's a fact. And I will give you an example. Some devotees, they were still thinking that women are inferior. Even God sisters are inferior. Some devotees were still thinking that. When I came to South America, the official caretakers of South America of that time, I will not mention names, they called South America Sudra America. They called South America worse things. I don't want to repeat. Huh? Something like very ugly. And they very clearly declare to everybody there's no leadership in South America. That's why they kept bringing in other people and not trusting the local leaders. And that was their party line of those who are supposed to be beyond the bodily discrimination. True or not? So, I'm sorry you Prabhupada gave us this Aham Brahmasmi concept, but it didn't go very deep with many people. They still thought that we are better. Also, racial discrimination was upkept and is upkept even in India. There's a lot of racial discrimination. So, in other words, even the Vaishnavas, many of them, they need a good Oida therapy to get rid of this prejudice against women, against poor people, against those who didn't study, what, blah, 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 whatever. It's not worth it. What to do, what to say? Now am I doing the same thing? Now I remember playing myself superior to those who had those prejudices. 
somebody very justifiably may ask me. And my answer to this is, I don't want it to be like that. Because I love all the Vaishnavas and I love all the people in the world. And the meeting I'm going to at 11, they're not the friends of the Gopi Vaishnavas of our style. There's a whole bunch of people from all kinds of religious groups, caste Goswamis, Sahajis, Babajis, is going to be on, and they all together want to make a Goranga, a Goranga gate. Not an easy job. <coughs> I have to be also very humble there. Because how many different Christian groups are there? How many different Vaishnava groups are there? So, it's easy to appreciate somebody of a religion totally different from yours, and you say, oh, yes. But to appreciate somebody who is doing the same thing you do, almost the same, but a little different, that is me. That is more difficult. That's a real, real task. So my Guru Dev, he has given us so many tasks. Really. My Guru Dev was amazing. All the tasks he has given to us. So, I learned from my Guru Dev, coming back to the subject of study, I learned from my Guru Dev that for a Brahmin, it's not favorable to have a job where the people on top of you are not Brahminical or devotional. For Brahmin, it's a very great torture to be in such a system. And it is my job to, supposedly, to make you Brahmins. That's what first initiation, second initiation is, you become a Brahmin, right? So, if it is my job, as I give Diksha to people to make them Brahmins, I have to tell them, hey, don't become an employee somewhere. Let's do something creative. Let's find out a way so we can sustain ourselves and our preaching without becoming slaves in a society where you cannot have an opinion. I want the best for the devotees. And therefore I tell them, if you want to be part of this, then be straightforward and spread with your activity, with your hard work, spread Krishna consciousness somehow, somewhere. And without smoking marijuana. <coughs> Some people are so foolish, they think I can chant Hare Krishna and smoke marijuana at the same time and I'll get some good result. <coughs> and they don't. They don't get a good result. That's why we give up marijuana. And that's why we give up illicit sex. Because if you have a baby here and a baby there and a baby there, then what is your criteria? What is your, uh, what is your morality you can talk about? But that's why we believe in family, nice family, or renunciation, or whatever. But we don't believe in illicit sex. Anyhow, these are a few things I want you to f reflect upon and please protect our Vrinda mission that we can be Brahmins and we train up Brahmins. <laughs> but if somebody does want to study, somebody wants to take that risk 
and somebody wants to work in an institution, yes, we also appreciate that if they stay Krishna conscious. But they cannot expect me to make that the party line. They cannot expect me to tell everybody, as a good Brahmin, you should get a good education, have a good job in the system, like a spy. How you call it? Undercover agent. Yeah, why not? I have some undercover agents. I can't tell you who they are, because they are undercover. And Siddhaswarupananda, my godbrother, he, he managed to get a parliament member into the United Nations, in the U.S. Congress. And after managing that, you know what he, he allowed her, because Tulsi Gabbard is a friend of mine, he allowed her to go to the military. And she went to Iraq, and she went there, and she, she preached everywhere. She was the religious person. Because when she was running for office in the United States, if you can say, I served my country in the military, that is already you get 25% more of the vote. And a woman who goes to Iraq and serves in the military that uh, my godbrother understood that will be the key to success for her. And it became. She's so highly respected <laughs> that now she goes and makes Diwali messages, Janmastami messages, Gita Jayanti messages. She speaks the most amazing preaching on the YouTube from the U.S. Congress. Never seen before. When Mr. Modi, the president of India, when he went to the U.S. a few days ago, the only one who got a private interview with him was Tulsi Gabbard. He wanted to talk to her. That is the work, the hard work of Acharya and and Srila Siddhaswarupananda. So it's not that these things cannot happen, you know. There's also undercover agents in Krishna consciousness. As a matter of fact, Mother Rinda is one. She's in charge of all the banks of north of, uh, of, north of Colombia. She goes from one city to the other overseeing all the banks. And then she comes and dances with us and picks up garbage in Vindam. <laughs> yes, that is also. So, in other words, don't make me a fanatic because I'm not. But don't change the ideas that we have to give ourselves to hard work for Prabhupada if we want to get anything going. And this is not a lazy bump movement. Lazy bumps don't get nowhere. And if you're not a lazy bump, you report yourself to your service every day. Not because somebody runs after you. You have to run after your service. Even when you are here for one month just for Parikrama, you still have to run after service. I'm running after service all the time. Not only your service. Now I'm running after service of the gate. And yesterday I was running after the World Vaishnava Association. And some people said, well, the meeting was not well organized. I must say, yes, they are right. It could have been much better organized. I was a little bit left alone as well with the meeting. But anyhow, I wasn't all alone because I had all of you. And it became a beautiful meeting from one point of view and not so efficient from another <coughs> point of view. But what the devotees usually don't know, 
that the re very reality, in fact, that such a meeting takes place in the name of the World Vaishnava Association, where I have been practically the secretary for 15 years. That is the reason why the Vrinda family is accepted in India, outside of India, because we belong to a original, traditional world religion of highest principles. We are not a, a weird sect where they're only fighting inside and don't accept each other and don't respect each other. Otherwise, I mean, look at it. Let, let's say, if somebody comes to Chile, ask Gurudev Atulananda, hey, what is this movement all about, which you are the leader of? <coughs> then he can say, well, I'm one uh, of the uh, leaders of the Vinda mission, which belongs to the Vishwa Vaishnava Rajshava, which was started 500 years ago. And that Vinda mission is totally dedicated to creating welfare in the world according to the principles of the Vedas, which Lord Krishna's Bhagavad Gita was spoken 5,000 years ago. And the people go, wow, you're representing that in Chile? Congratulations, Aurelio Fernandez, you're really, you did the job here, you brought something to Chile. That's because of the World Vaishnava Association, my dear. Otherwise, he would have to say, who are you? Oh, you know, we are, we are the Hare Krishnas. I, I came here a few years ago with Vira Prakash, and we started opening a temple, and later Prabhupada left the planet, and then uh, we, we, we decided to leave ISKCON because we didn't like the American style of management, and now we started our own branch of, of Krishna consciousness. Huh? And then the reporter said, huh? Really? Let me find out more about it. Then he goes to Santiago Iskon Temple. What do you have to say about Mr. Uh, Atulananda? <laughs> oh, he's a rebel. He, he went against our authority. He, he's just an ambitious man. He, he's not... Don't trust anything he says. <laughs> right or not? That's why I had to start the World Vaishnava Association. Because I didn't want to put my disciples in this awkward situation of being denounced by people without adhikar and understanding. <coughs> so if it's not so well organized, that is another thing, but it exists. It's on the internet, it exists, and nobody can question its existence. The hard work of 20 years did work out. But... My Indian team, Dina Bandu, my Indian disciples, my disciples in India who speak languages, my great fellows here, you know this wonderful Vindavan Chandra, you know they are from South America, they learned Hindi, Bengali. This team is my, my what cream of the crop, you know, it's the, the topmost cream. Yeah, they can make this much more successful if they are present, if they push it. We have the magazine, the World Vaishnava magazine in Hindi, we have the World Vaishnava magazine in English, we can go out and we can present it. The World Vaishnava magazine alone is so prestigious, so well done, thanks to Gandharvika, that you can go to any leader in India, present this, says, I'm working for this. They say, what? You, young Colombian, Chilean, you work with this institution? Wow, incredible, come. But if they don't do it, if they just hide in the room and eat prasadam, that's all they do. Then, then of course, what, what future you expect from that? I can't do everything alone. So it's up to us to make things successful. I decided to work with Vandana Shiva. I became a member of Navdanya. As a matter of fact, we have to make sure that we pay our, our yearly contribution because I consider Vandana Shiva and Navdanya to be very prestigious world effort for Mother Earth. 
right? So that's why I went with a few devotees and we took a course with her. I took my sannyasi time to take a course in Dehradun with Vandana Shiva and became her friend. And now we are working together. When I joined Atikigwa and Vandana Shiva, historically spoken, the words of Vandana Shiva was, today the wisdom of the East of India and the wisdom of the natives of South America become one for protecting Mother Earth. You know, that was for me like a home run, if you know about basketball. Baseball. Huh? Baseball. Baseball. <laughs> a home run. You run all the way to the final. Yes. That declaration, that was so important. Because now I can show this to the natives. Say, look, Mrs. Vandana Shiva came here and celebrated with us. So we are uniting. And that declaration for the Utsav is like one of the key declarations that actually the, the, there is respect from India for the natives because Vandana Shiva, she represents India and she represents environmentalism of its highest. Fearless struggle against the powerful dominators of injustice in the seeds and the agriculture, etc. Et so, these were all plans I'm making. Not because I'm becoming just an environmentalist or just because I, I want to have a name in the interreligious uh, uh, world or, or because I, I want to be a, the peacemaker amongst the, the different Gaudiya groups. If simultaneously I can be of any use in any of those fields, why not? What's wrong with that? But that's not my purpose. My purpose is to serve my spiritual master and to follow my heart. And the World Conscious Pact is part of it. Now the, the, the World Peace Therapy, that's another th new approach for trying to create a presence of the devotees in the world without the stigma of being some. You see, there's one thing. You should know this because this is for your, for you devotees, for your preaching. Prabhupada very many times said, we are not Hindus. Why did he say that? Because there's so much nonsense going on in the name of Hinduism. So much nonsense. So Prabhupada said, no, 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 we are not Hindus. We follow Sanatan Dharma. But many people say in India they're following Sanatan Dharma. Even some impersonalists, they also use the word Sanatan Dharma. So in the end it comes even in, we are not Sanatan Dharmas because some people do nonsense in the name of Sanatan Dharma if you want so. So we are Vaishnavas. Okay, whatever. Anyway, Prabhupada said we are not Hindus. But in the world, there is a general acceptance of <coughs> world religions. World religions have a right to exist. So if I, you say I'm a Hindu, they go, oh, you're a Hindu. Oh, you're a Hindu. Oh, okay, you're a Hindu. You say, I'm on the Hare Krishna movement. Oh, oh, oh you mean one of those dangerous sects, <laughs> guru cults. Careful, call the police. Huh? It's day and night of a difference. When you say you're a Hindu, I say, oh yes, very nice. Uh, the, the, because a Hinduism means a world religion. But any, any guru cultishness. Now, hold on, hold on your breath. What does it mean, guru cultishness? Guru cultishness is a fad. It is a demon brand. It is a demon brand created by the demons. An Ashura brand created by the Ashuras. I will explain this to you. It's a very important point. A guru means a teacher. Guru Shasyat, Pitana Shasyat. No, we worship the guru in the father, in the mother, in the teacher. 
in the in in the in the garden. We worship the teeth wherever there's shiksha, diksha, all these things. We worship the Guru in many forms. And in every culture, in every religion, there is gurus. They may call them abuelos, they may call them uh, uh, ancianos, they may call them whatever they may call. In every culture, in every system, there's scholars, gurus, teachers, la 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 la. So what is a guru cult? Well, I will tell you. Anything which questions the value, the, the validity of the powerful groups in this world, they will be branded a guru cult. They will be branded a sect. They will be branded a minority. They will be branded dangerous. They will be branded suspicious. By who? By the atheists and by the fundamentalists who are some kind of atheist souls. <clears throat> In other words, they say, you're Christian or you go to hell. You're Muslim or I kill you. These type of people. These type of people will call you a guru cult because you follow somebody else which is not them. As soon as you follow somebody which is not them, they say, oh, 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 it's a guru cult. A nonsense declaration. It is just another prejudice they have created. But the prejudice is so strong that sometimes as a Hare Krishna devotee, you get stigmatized. They see you as member of a guru cult. A guru cult. And you know what they think about a guru cult? A mindless person manipulated by some <coughs> hypnosis. Ben Kumari, am I hypnotizing you? I hope not. Uh, but this is what they, this is the stigma they give on the Guru cult. That these people are stupid, these people are manipulated, these people are hypnotized because they are not Christians. Because they don't follow the atheist concept of the government. You know, many communist governments, they wanted to eliminate religion altogether. They wanted to get rid of the competition. They wanted to say, no, if you don't believe in us, only, and you lose all the rights. You lose the rights to, to do anything here in this world, in this country, in this and that. So I hope I made my points clear. Because you come here to Vindavan to meet with me for one month or more to learn what I'm doing, what I'm fighting for and what you are representing in your life in where you go. So today we say yes, we are Hindu Vaishnavas. Definitely we see. As a matter of fact, in Germany I registered our society, the Hindu Verein. And ever since we have put that name on our society, the newspapers interview us, they invite us to all kinds of religious affairs. We are highly respected. Even we are in the world, the world religions in Berlin and like that, no? So we are Hindu Vaishnavas, period. Here in Colombia also. In Colombia it's a little different because in Colombia it's another story. But even there we are Hindu Vaishnavas. It's favorable, it's better. Anyhow, so these are the things. When Prabhupada was here, the, the Vaishnavas were not that stigmatized yet. But it came. While Prabhupada was here, Christians made very big, heavy e efforts against the Vaishnavas. <coughs> At some point, there were court cases against Prabhupada, and there were said, 
deprogrammers. There was a movement where people paid $50,000 to somebody. They would kidnap the devotee from the temple and they would torture him so much that he promised, no, no, I will not go back to the temple. I stay now with my mom and dad. Mm -hmm.